Good morning, good morning. <laughs> uh, all right, it's going to be a Monday morning already. Oh, uh, Anyway, guys, good morning. My name's Brian, and today is Monday, April 15th, 2024, and this is episode 676 of the Lots Project Podcast, and it's titled, What About Vincent? I'll be chatting about finishing up the show Lost, Amazon getting it all wrong, a new sighting at Delinquent Scully, and much, much more. But first, let's check out who's hanging out in the live chat, who's around for the coffee crew. Grab a cup of coffee, hang out for about an hour, and we will chat about everything under the sun. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We got Rewild Our Life in first for the first. Is that your first first, Rachel? Is that your first first good morning to you uh jim good morning and uh she's letting rachel he jim is letting rachel know that she won it was kind of obvious but maybe when you get that old you just you need to say things like that but good morning jim good morning rachel how we doing i'll be popping over um I'll be popping over on to Noster. Good morning, Jim, over there on Noster. I'm I'm pretty impressed uh, with Jim's multitasking abilities. Jim is always popping over on Noster, which I appreciate. Go grow a Noster. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's one of those days, guys. It's one of those days. I'm popping around over between all these feeds here. And dreaming of the day that I will have a cool little studio set up that uh, I've been pondering and figuring out what uh, what that's going to look like, what it's going to entail. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Soon, soon, soon. Good morning, Pickle Pete. How are we doing? You are in. You are in. Good morning. Um. <laughs> Rewild their life says it's her first first and saved her first cup of coffee for the show. Well, I appreciate that. I have a uh, I have about three quarters of a French press here today um, left for the show. It is Silver Bullet Blend. It is still Silver Bullet Blend. I started drinking that uh, late last week, and it's fantastic. Had it over the weekend and really enjoyed it. Got uh, had some good morning coffee time with Corey. Um, the weekend before we had been at SRF all weekend and it was kind of get up, uh, make coffee, pound the coffee, take the dogs for a walk and get on the road. And we didn't have our time where we normally get up on Saturday and Sunday and both sit down and enjoy time together, dick around on our phones and, um, just kind of start the weekend enjoying each other's company and, um, Sorry, I got a dog hair. Weird, I got a dog hair hanging from my hat here, and it's bugging the living shit out of me. I'm trying to get it. Hold on, guys. I don't know why I would ever have random stray dog hairs hanging from anything, but... Ah, there we go. You might have noticed the new uh, new patch today. I don't know if that is uh, coming through loud and clear. Um, I don't know if that's la coming through the right direction. I know that this is kind of backwards sometimes with the camera, and I can never tell if it's only my screen or if it's the if it's the broadcast screen. But went with the new uh, patch of the day, I guess. Uh, my buddy Toolman Tim gave me a uh, um, well. Actually, we bartered for the whole pile of uh, backlogged patch of the month club patches that he had at SRF. He had all the ones that I didn't have yet um, with us moving around. I never went and, and signed up to get it to mon monthly delivery, monthly delivery. So when Tim and I hook up and uh, and and meet up along the way, I, I, uh, I get all the patches I missed just so uh, we didn't have to deal with shipping. But this seemed appropriate for today. I was going through them. I picked them up at SRF and I had them stacked up over here and I was looking at them. And I was like, man, that's a perfect one for tax day. So, folks, if you um, if you haven't filled out your taxes yet, hope you're not busy today. Hope you're not busy today. It is um, 
it is April 15th. It is tax day. So I went with the tax, the tax patch. And if you can't read it, it does, it is kind of hard to see. Um, there it'll zoom in there. We got S the dollar sign tax is a four letter word. And I think anybody in this chat kind of agrees that anything to do with tax is not a good thing. So all right, Mike. Mike's homestead over on the vertical feed. Morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for letting me know it's uh it's um the right direction on the vertical feed. I got a telegram message out to you, my man. I uh I just got one little question for you. Um, when you get a chance to circle around to that, I don't want it to get buried or something. I don't know how busy your telegram feed is. Um Pickle Pete says, wait till October. <laughs> Rewilder Life says, I'm a greedy business owner. Oh. <laughs> Rewilder sent in her stay out of jail. Legal for a fee. Anything you want to do is legal for a fee. Even breathe. Even breathe. Um, uh, Hunter says, found out I got some fraud because of taxes. Interesting. Interesting. Do tell. Do tell. What do you got going on with uh, fraud? But anyway, anyway, if you uh, if you're over on Noster listening and you want to help contribute to to the to the Brian Fund to the Human Fund, I don't know if you'll get a ta tax do tax deductible donation for that, but you can uh, you can zap away over there on Noster, and that goes right to the Human Fund. Pickle Beat says uh, coffee is headed out today for C4. If you remember the C4 Club of uh, Food Forest Farms, um, foodforestfarms.com, the coffee I drink every day, the C4 Club membership that I'm a member of and can't recommend enough. Definitely check it out. It is, uh, it is just an unbelievable value and the customer service and, and product you're going to get from that is, uh, is top notch. So, Welcome K Bonk, one of uh, one of the newer members of C4, I believe. I believe, I don't know. Um, but anyway, C4 coffee goes out on Sunday, and uh, enjoy when it when it lands. Enjoy, it is absolutely fantastic. Hunter says someone in Florida has health insurance under his name. Well, at least you don't have to pay the penalty for uh, for not having health insurance. Is that still a thing? Did they re or did they? Uh, did they uh, re, re, uh, repeal that whole thing? It changes your taxes from getting a thousand back to paying a thousand. How does um, oh did they also so they so they're also collecting income in your name if if your taxes are changing, I have to assume that they're collecting income in your name. Uh, quick little story before we get into stuff, uh, kind of resulting around that. I, I remember way back, man, before I met Corey, I was in Minnesota. I was working at a, I was working at a factory and, um, we had, let's say we had lots of, uh, undocumented workers with documents. <coughs> so, it this was probably back in two th way early 2000s maybe 2003 ish uh so the place i worked we had lots of ecuadorians lots of mexicans lots of guatemalans and uh, liberians liberians seem to be uh, pretty solid in their documentation they were here as refugees i believe but a lot of our um, compadres from south of the border were not here legally and uh they had a a pretty good system set up that um as their friends would come they they provided them with the with the the place to go to get their documentation um morning mike over on the vertical feed and um mike says didn't the republicans repeal obamacare when the control when they controlled it all that's what i thought but they didn't they, but they didn't uh just rhetoric all right all right i was confused um anyway so these guys would go and get their documents social security card driver's license whatever they needed and then they would come and work 
I, I had no problem working working with them. I um I was a little miffed that I knew that they weren't paying taxes. They would like they were they had someone else's name, they had somebody else's social security number, and they would just claim as uh, as high a number. I think it was max was ten and take as little taxes out as possible. And then what difference did it make? Because they just sent all their money back to wherever they're from. So I don't blame them. It was, it was just a shitty situation. Well, anyway, one of the days, one of the days, similar to Hunter, <laughs> one one of the guys gets his paycheck and this was back when you got paychecks uh, before it was direct deposit. You could still get paychecks because none of these guys had bank accounts, I don't think. But you got your paycheck and uh, the envelopes came on Thursday at lunchtime and everybody sat down and they opened their check and I happened to be walking down. So this was a concrete factory and there were like several different departments and several different crews. And I was up in the in the concrete mixing room. And then we would send concrete down to the for the forums on the floor. And that's where a lot of the um, unskilled labor, I guess, the, the entry level guys were down there. A lot of the guys that were getting um, the, a lot of the guys that were getting uh, <laughs> supplemental docu documentation. And so I'm walking down there after lunch and we're delivering some concrete down and I'm standing next to one of the supervisors talking to him and this one of his guys comes over and he's got so it's it's one of the guys that uh, that that obviously didn't have the right documentation, but he didn't speak any English and he had his buddy that spoke uh, maybe have the English and they walk over and they got the guy's check in his hand and they they asked the supervisor they're like, hey, will you will you help with the check translating back and forth and the supervisor says, yeah. Uh, what do you got going on? And they point, start pointing at the deductions. And I'm like, oh, that, that son of a bitch is finding out about taxes, about income tax and stuff. And the supervisor kind of looks over at me and he shakes his head and he, he shows me the check and he's like, check this out. <laughs> the dude had child support coming out of his check for like, it must have been like five kids or back back child support or something. But uh, must have uh, scammed somebody's social security number that was on the on the payroll deduction for child support through the state of Minnesota, because the dude got zapped for like half his check for child support. He didn't have any kids. <laughs> I was like, so I guess you uh, I guess you roll the dice when you steal people's social security number that uh, you might end up paying more than you bargained for. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was a uh, that was a little little uh, fun experience. Good morning, Highness Velcheskov. Sexy me. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? <laughs> thanks, thanks for swinging by on the on the live feed. Loco says my wallet and social security card was stolen back during college in hell. Uh, I'm sure someone from South of the border has been using my identity since. Uh, that was one thing I, <laughs> one thing you learned as a kid that uh, when you got into your older times, you were like, wait, what? Uh, some of my friends carried their social security card around in their wallet. And now it's not like, mm, um, social security number, yeah, you can pretty much find it anywhere because everybody asked for it. But back in the 80s, when it was like your golden ticket, like that was the thing you didn't want anybody to get. Because if they had that, <laughs> you were screwed. Um, who thought it was ever a good idea? Mike, why was it you? Why did you think it was a good idea to carry that document with you in your wallet? <laughs> were you having to show it on a regular basis? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's get to the list here. Let's get to the list of topics I had for today. Um, we finished Lost. Finally. Finally. We got to the last season. Um, everyone did. <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden, one day, everybody was like, wait. <laughs> wait. If they... 
if somebody steals my wallet, they have my driver's license, they have my social security card, they have my credit cards. So now they have my ad. Maybe we should have started writing our mother's maiden name on the back of our social security card. That would have been probably the better idea. Um, <laughs> Loco got screwed. He had to bring it to HR at work that day. <laughs> oh, well, that's a tough, that's tough, man. That's tough. Um, uh, Let's check in over on Noster here. Yeah, Jim, thanks for that zap. That keeps the stream running. I appreciate that. Uh, every day I'm throwing out about uh, eh, just under three, just over 300 sats a day to, to stream over there on Noster while I build that audience. And uh, I appreciate Jim bopping in there every day and dropping a zap. It uh, it definitely, it helps the, it helps the level of sats stay even for that experiment and we'll see how that goes in the very near future good morning clark thanks for stopping in uh but we finished lost yesterday we got to the last season well i guess it wasn't the last season so Corey, how many seasons were there five six total six six seasons of lost um we got to probably i would say season five and we really kind of petered interest of I would say, I have to say, it's probably season five. Started waning. Started when the episodes were on, kind of, um, kind of, mm, take it or leave it. Started pondering other things to throw on the TV to distract and relax. Hunter says, remember when the social security number was not used for ID? Yeah. Remember when it wasn't supposed to be a tracking number? <laughs> Weird. Um, so we had uh we got through season five. <laughs> good morning, Chris Dixon. <laughs> Chris Dixon says, Good morning, kids. Sorry I was late, got here as soon as I wanted to. <laughs> Do you say that if you're late to work? Or I, I imagine that you're a you're a responsible man and probably never never late to work but uh, that is a fantastic uh yeah own it statement when you get to work late got here when i wanted to <laughs> got here when it was important enough <laughs> anyway got season five the show was okay um it started to go downhill they started to put in those recap episodes and now I did kind of have a second thought about the recap episodes that I was talking about. I think it was last week or the week before um, that it was, it's the sure sign that they're starting to run out of, uh, of ideas is when they're starting to do these weird, um, these weird recap episodes or uh, story behind the scenes episodes and all that shit. If you made the, if you made the, the show good enough, First of all, you wouldn't need to recap people. People would be like, oh, my God, this show is so good. I need to go watch it again. Uh, or the second part is when you start running out of shit, you need to you need to rehash. So once that started, I was like, mm, kind of soured a little bit. The storyline got a little kind of wonky. And, and I was like, man, they could have really done a lot more with this show that they, they really could have. The, the time travel shit uh, kind of interests me because it's it's something that interests me now. And they were kind of messing around, uh, poking at it back then. And so we kept watching. And it was kind of like we've spent the time. We're, we're, we're in for a dollar, in, in for a dollar, in for a dime. Or what is that saying? I don't, that doesn't even make sense to me. Um, in for a dime, in for a dollar. I don't, I don't remember uh, how it wasn't one that I, I use commonly, but you know, we were into season five. There was only six seasons. We weren't like, it wasn't like we were waiting week to week to week. It was like, we'd throw on a couple episodes at night after dinner and uh, mess around, kind of wind down for the evening. And I was like, well, I might as well go through and see what happens. And so we pounded, we like, we we went through it and last night we got to the end and i was like i would have been so disappointed 
I really would have been so disappointed if I if I spent six years watching that. Even if it was like split between each season was the spring and the fall season. If I was waiting a week between shows, if I was waiting three to six years to watch this whole thing, and that's the way it ended, I would have been like, I probably would have been done with TV right then and there. Probably, I probably should have watched Lost and never, uh, and never made it. Um, <laughs> thanks for the comments on uh, both sides there, Loco. Uh, if you're watching the vertical feed, Loco's over there pounding away, spelling out vertical. I uh, <laughs> vertical video. Um, anyway. Pickle P says he's got the tax hat on too. Woo woo. Uh, Tool Man Tim's Patch of the Month Club. If you uh, if you are interested in picking up a monthly patch or one off patches, I think he was getting the one off patches listed too. I've been talking to him about that. I'll confirm he's actually down here for another uh, another week or so out at his property doing a stroke of business on the on his cabins and stuff. But anyway, as we're watching the end of Lost. We're getting towards the end. It's like we're in the last couple episodes. We're in the last episode. And Corey looks over to me and she's like, what happened to Vincent? Now, if you've never seen the show or you've seen it and you don't remember it because it was from like the early 2000s, Vincent was the damn lab. He was the dog. On episode one, here's a plane crash and there's a, a a yellow lab running around it was the kid's dog uh they played it out a little bit in the story they told about the dog why the dog was there why the kid had the dog they had the dog in a few episodes here and there spotty but Corey's like whatever happened to vincent why didn't they she's like they tell the story from all these different points of view from all the different characters the main characters and they 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 switch back and forth through all the stories watching the stories through their point of view they never did it through the dog's point of view what is wrong with them and i'm just sitting here listening to her say this feeling like that this is normal that my my wife is asking why they didn't show the tv show through the dog's point of view i love her I love her. She she keeps my life interesting for sure. I can't I can't say that uh, that my beautiful bride does not keep my uh, my life interesting. Anyway, they did show the dog. Um, they did show the dog towards the end. Uh, Jack, one of the main characters, was um, laying down. Maybe maybe not going to be living anymore, or maybe he wasn't living already. I I, I don't know. It was confusing at the end for a. For a simpleton like me but um the dog came and the dog appeared all of a sudden and laid down next to him while uh it, 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 like showed him some love and Corey's like see this could have been the best character in the whole thing look how much he loves him look how good to bo- he's such a good boy you they really should have showed him more rely other life says i'm glad i wasn't the only one confused i mean was I confused or was that the point uh, that you could take out of it what you wanted? Were they being edgy? <laughs> they were being edgy, I think. Um, I mean, is it, is it, has it been long enough that I can just, um, that I can talk about these shows? Like, is anyone going back? Like, I think if I was listening to a podcast and some dude was like, yeah, uh, so we started watching Lost the other day. I'm going to talk about it. I wouldn't be like, no, 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 no. I, I, like, it's been a while, right? It's been a while. Pickle Pete says, I love flopping down and being one of the puppy pack dogs I view. Anybody ever remember the va- the band dogs I view? They had like two semi decent hits in the late nineties. Pretty sure I saw them opening for Counting Crows. You know the ones that sang Mr. Jones. Yeah, that's my era. <laughs> I 
you know, random facts. Chris Dixon says, I'm glad I stopped TV before Lost. Yeah. Yeah, I um we're we're transitioning transitioning away from uh TV shows, I think. We're going to hit um <coughs> we're going to hit up some some more educational stuff. We got some we have some things that we have to learn. We have some things that we have to educate ourselves on and get rolling and um and start figuring out. So we got some projects coming up and we're going to have to not watch TV, but it is nice. It is nice to have that thing that, um, when, when it's time to shut off and I, I purposely have to do this in my life. I have to shut off my brain. Like I have to tell it, you get a rest, you get a rest. And usually that's before I do uh, before bedtime in the evening, we'll sit down and, um, I try to check out. So during that time, it's either I, I, I stare at the TV and let my brain stop, or I stare at random shit on my phone where it's not anything important. I should probably stop doing that for a while and just, just use my brain for what it's supposed to be. Um, Time to get fixing that internet. <laughs> Corey and I both have been having problems and we're like, what do we do? What are we going to do um, with the leaves coming in? Because I think that the, I think that the starlight, the Starlink satellites might be in a, just a different position um, from the time when the leaves started to drop off the tree that's blocking my freaking signal. So I don't know where to move my dish and I'm very, very limited into the positions I can do it. And I'm not sure I want to go through the motions of getting a pole um, pending some things that we got going on. So Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Pickle Pete says TV shows are silly. Watching men chase balls is the shit. <laughs> he's telling me he's watching the golf yesterday and i'm like the only reason he's watching golf is because he's got a wager written on it and he's like yeah tigers minus 11 going into the final round and i uh da, da, da. i was like okay <laughs> rewilder's life uh, is enjoying enjoying some books um and takota cohen etc youtube school um Pickle Pete's trying to learn calculus so I can understand the new theory of everything. Yikes, I found a rabbit. You found a rabbit hole in calculus? Yeah, I mean, I I took um, three or four years of that or five years of it uh, between high school and, and college. Rabbit hole. It's just it's just theory. It's not it's it. You, you'll get there. Um. Chris Dixon loved to watch sports back in the day, but now he has a dog to chase balls. <laughs> Loco says he loves that go fast, go far, or go far, go fast t-shirt. Yeah, this is a, it's not a bad, it's not a bad, um, it's not a bad shirt. I like it. Uh, I like, I almost picked up the tax slave shirt from uh, SOE Tactical while I was at uh, SOE, but I got the overnight success the overnight success and it says uh i think it says overnight success and on the back it was like after years and years of hard work and i was like oh my god i must be in that years and years of hard work stage because <laughs> i've yet to find um <laughs> i've yet to find that overnight success um oh he was plus 12 <laughs> Like, like he was good. He was supposed to be good or something. Um, Chris Dixon says, it, hey, Pickle Pete, if you found a rabbit hole in calculus, you're overthinking it. <laughs> what? Uh, where are you in? Uh, where are you in calculus, uh, Pete? I'm curious how far you are down the rabbit hole. 
Uh, anyway, so we finished up Lost. We ended up making it through. The end was mm, meh. Meh. Could have been way better. But yeah, all Corey could worry, all Corey could worry about was the dog. And I was happy that she got to see it. I think it, it was the last episode you got to see, Vincent, right? Yeah, she got to see the dog at the end. So my wife's happy, and that's all that matters to me. Uh, another thing that we noticed over the weekend, and it has to do with our Amazon Prime, because I, I talk about watching TV. The only thing we have really is Amazon Prime. Uh, so whatever comes with that, the movies, the TV shows, the freebie, uh, whatever that is. I don't know. I haven't caught. I haven't kept up with all the streaming shit because um, you're trying to define what calculus is. I mean, okay. So I haven't kept up. <laughs> Sorry. I just, my, my brain twitched a little bit when, um, when he said that. <laughs> Logo says, do you. I looks like I'm going to be unhooking the ladder from the shower and climbing up on the roof and trying to figure out how to make the internet better. Chris Dixon thought I had a stroke. Yeah, I might have. I might have. I might have on the calculus thing. He's at the beginning. He's to trying to define what it is. Um. Anyway, Loco wondered if we do pay-per-view on Prime. Uh, we, we buy movies that we like. We buy movies um, when we get bonus. Do you guys ever get the bonus? digital cash from uh from when you order stuff on amazon you see that uh, option a lot of the times when you're getting packages delivered from amazon you can choose what day it's going to be delivered they're like well if you get it on prime your prime delivery day or less boxes blah 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 well a lot of times there's a a thing there where if you get your shit delivered on a certain day you get like a three dollar credit and normally from what I've seen, it's usually, well, maybe it's just because it's, we're rural and it shows up once a week anyway, but if be the same option, so free prime delivery on Tuesday and Wednesday, or less boxes, get it all on Wednesday, or get it all on Wednesday and get a $3 credit. And I'm like, why are these two different options? Why don't you automatically just give me the fucking credit? But you click that one, and when the stuff things ships, you get like a three dollar credit in your Prime account to purchase shit, digital credit. Um, so we'll use those, and we'll stack those up, and then when we see a movie that's like, uh, sorry, there's a bug flying in front of my face, dog hairs, bugs, fucking everything here today. Um, we'll let those accumulate. We'll find a movie we like, and it'll be on sale or whatever. And um, if we're going to watch it more than once, that's kind of like our, our, uh, our gold standard. Uh, maybe once, maybe twice, uh, or twice or three times is like, Hey, do we like this enough to watch it three times? And we figure a couple bucks of you, and then we end up having it forever. So pay-per-view, not really. We buy movies. <laughs> no TV shows. We won't, we won't buy, uh, we won't pay to watch TV shows. Chris Dixon says that must be.com. There's no, not credit on dot CA. Yeah. And it's, it's very, it's, it's so uh, hit and miss whether it's there or not. I, I can't, I can't pinpoint what actually triggers that to be an option. Cause it's not there all the time. Um, let me see. Let's hit the comments here. Bop, bop. No, nothing over at the vertical except <laughs> except <laughs> Loco uh, banging away uh, and Noster pretty quiet except old Jim's over there snoring, I think. Um, yeah, so that's our Amazon. Um, the thing I was going to talk about with Amazon kind of getting it wrong now, though. So Corey and I noticed that every time... It's well, I've, I've documented it well that we like 
the Mexican place in town. Mexican food is fantastic. Uh, we've also discovered really recently that uh, when you order it to go and you don't go and drink margaritas, it's a lot cheaper. And I'm just saying there's been somebody in this in this family that hasn't had a, a drop of alcohol since January 1st. What's that? Oh, <laughs> I thought she was defending herself back there. No, um, Corey has a couple of margaritas when we go, and they're spendy, but they're worth it. They, I mean, they were. I, 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 I pounded my fair share of them for sure uh, before, and that was probably one of the reasons I was like, hmm, I'm probably done with this. Um, so we'll talk about going to Mexican, and it's it's about once a week. It's about once a week. Uh, we'll go to Mexican. We'll talk about it. We're like, Hey, you want to go get Mexican? Hey, you want to go, uh, you want to go get it. Then when we're there, we're talking around our phones. We're talking about the, the menu items. They're all in Spanish. Um, yeah. So we go on, we go on, we go home. And usually that night we'll be kind of browsing because even though if we're watching lost every so often, we'll be like, well, let's see what else is on there. And so we'll be scrolling through and the TV shows are all from Mexico in Spanish. Now, I don't speak Spanish. I speak enough. I speak Spanglish. I, I, I speak restaurant Spanish. I speak enough that I could probably communicate, like went to Tijuana and made it back and didn't have to piss in the street. Like I know enough. I know enough. Pickle Pete says, that's a business dinner for sure, says your tax advisor. <laughs> yep. Uh, and so we, we talk about it. And then we come home and Mexico, Mexico, Amazon <laughs> thinks we're in Mexico. Like they want to show us all these Mexican versions of the shows. Um, we click on them and we're like, well, maybe it's, maybe it's in English. No. And then the other thing is, like, if we're on a Saturday morning, if we're sitting here and it's gloomy out or we we don't really have anything we want to um, anything we want to jump into right away. Maybe we'll we'll pull up a, a TV show while we have our coffee in the morning. If it was a rough morning, whatever. We don't have plans. And if we're always talking about Corey's tea. Because Corey loves her breakfast tea. She loves her bedtime tea. Everything in between. She loves tea. She she feels like drinking tea like I feel like drinking coffee. A lot. Um, so when we talk about her tea, when we order her tea, does anybody else get all the British Amazon stuff? Like, we came here a long time ago. We came here a long time ago. I don't give a shit about the queen. I don't give a shit about the king. I don't give a shit about the royal family. That's like saying, hey, we should show him, uh, we should show him shows from Peru. Like, what, what, why, why would I want to be watching British TV? Why in the world? Hunter said, that's why my feeds are all messed up. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, Pickle P says, we started destroying Squirrel's phone when he leaves oh, When he leaves it over here. We just talk shit around it till he gets back. We waited a week and asked if he was getting any interesting ads. Now, that's solid. That's solid. Uh, I sent Canadian Farmstead a TikTok this weekend. It was kind of messed up. I'm pretty sure I got it from Backwoods Butcher. Uh, we pass around some really kind of mm, questionable things, let's say. And uh, Canadian Farmstead got really worried that his uh, all algorithm was messed up enough as it is. And I don't think he actually opened it. <laughs> um, look, 
Philippine Nomad says he set his YouTube profile to be located in Mexico, but they didn't push me any Mexican content in his feeds. That's because they know you were lying, dude. <laughs> Google phone for the win. Yeah, so they get us all confused. They, I mean, like, literally, I have no idea. I have no idea why there would be Master Chef Mexico in Spanish. Why there would be Master Chef Mexico in Spanish in my Amazon feed. Like, seriously, I've never looked at Amazon in Spanish. I've never, I don't speak Spanish. Like I said, like anybody hearing me speak, speak Spanish knows I don't speak Spanish. How, why in the world are they advertising that to me? Hunter says he has Japanese anime, Korean dramas, music in the man. Loco only uses it on the browser, not on the phone app. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It confuses the living shit out of me when when there's Spanish. Now the English, the British, um, the the yeah, that stuff I kind of get. Like it's the same kind of language. It's it's basically we can understand it. I can understand it. I can translate it. They got some weird weird terms and or I guess different terms and accents don't particularly care to listen to it and I probably I usually flip it off but at least there's at least there's a reasonable expectation that I can understand what they're saying like why why is Amazon showing me why are they showing me Spanish I don't get it I don't get it if anybody works for Amazon and can and can tell me why that's populated in my in my video feed, I don't know. You that would be great. Pickle P says he only answers the phone, only answers phone calls in Spanish or Japanese. I don't answer phone calls. Pickle P says it resets the bot auto dialers. Ah, there you go. There you go. That's a good idea. Oh yeah, so that's where uh, Amazon's got me confused, and I'm I was I was trying to make a stretch. I was trying to make the connection, and the only thing I could come up with was the Spanish is coming from us our uh, our our obsession with a weekly dinner at the Mexican restaurant in town, and the the English British versions have got to be coming from all the tea that Corey drinks. So I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything beyond that. <coughs> Uh, I mentioned earlier the the patch of the month club toolman Tim's workshop uh, where this awesome tax patch came from. I'll be I'll be rolling out uh, I'll be rolling out more of these this all these patches here that I picked up and I got caught up on the um got caught up on all the back patches of the patch of the month. Let's see, government zero out of five would not recommend. <laughs> Hey, Chris Dixon says maybe calculus can help define the logarithm. Pickle B says answering my phone makes me the 1%. I will answer the phone if I know the number. Other than that, they can leave a message. And if they leave a message and it's coherent and makes sense and a phone number, I'll call them back. I'll call anybody back. Um... I've really had to resign that. I'm actually going to put that in my new voicemail. I really only have the number at the moment. But being here in Tennessee, if I'm not within earshot of the, the camper within my cell signal or within the Starlink signal, I rarely have I rarely have service. Um, so the majority of my calls go straight to voicemail. And I get the voicemail like 20 minutes later. So um, it just doesn't even make sense to have my ringer on. Jim gets Germany ads because he uses Germany on his VPN. Wow, that is that's a mystery, guys. I think we need to get uh, get the gang from Scooby Doo or um, or or Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys. We need to we need to call them in to explain to us why Jim is getting German ads when using Germany for his VPN. Can anybody figure that out? 
Pickle Pete, we need you to get dive down that calculus rabbit hole as fast as you can to help out Jim figure out his German ads. Do you speak German, Jim? Do you speak German? Uh, Toolman Tim. Anyway, with the with the patch of the month club, he uh, he's down here in Tennessee. My uh, my Canadian friend uh, from Alberta is down here in Tennessee for a little while. He's on his eight week road trip going uh, nine. <laughs> We're not going down the German jokes this morning. That it's it's too early on a Monday for me to censor myself enough to go down the German joke road. Um. So Tim's here. He's taking, I think it was an eight-week road trip down to a bunch of festivals and gatherings and workshops, and he's presenting it a bunch. But he um, he's out at his property for a solid, I think it was 10 to 12 days or something, which is awesome. Um, it, uh, it was pretty cool. He's out there. He's getting a lot done. We, Corey and I, went out on Saturday, uh, helped him move some materials around, uh, got to see him again. And we, yeah, we helped him out a little bit, but we were kind of walking material up the hill and Corey's like, Hey, look at that. Look over a new sighting on delinquent Scully. We had a new sighting. We've seen lots of bugs. We've seen ticks and bugs and skeeters and all sorts of, uh, all sorts of insects. We've seen a ton of um, lizards, lots of lizards, lots of little tiny lizards uh, running, scurrying around. I see Tim got some pictures of some pretty cool looking lizards uh, from yesterday. We've seen a turtle way up on the hill, way up on the hill laying eggs. So there's turtles around. But the one thing that I guess I don't want to say, Corey, Corey, are you nervous about snakes? Okay, she's not nervous. She wasn't she wasn't crazy about the fact when we left Minnesota, we left the area where there was no venomous snakes. I guess they technically we technically had rattlesnakes in Minnesota but not where we were. Uh everything in Minnesota really couldn't kill you. There were no spiders that could kill you. There were no snakes that could kill you. Um it was pretty safe but it was also pretty fucking cold and wolves will kill you, but like no, no small animals, no creepy crawly is going to hit you in the night and you're going to end up losing your leg or something like that. Um, so we're walking and we're kind of over by a Creek and we're walking, getting ready to cross the little bridge that uh, Carrie and Dylan built up on work day. And Corey's like, stop, look, and there's a bunch of deadfall off to the side. And we look over and boy, Oh boy. We saw our first snake. <laughs> we saw our first snake at Delinquent's Gully. And that first snake was a winner for sure. It was probably, Corey and I are, are guessing, because we didn't see it all at once. We saw it moving. And I'm guessing we thought it was bigger than it was. But it was fat. It was fat for sure. Big old black rat snake. Big old black rat snake big around he was well fed um we were guessing three to four feet they get four to five feet we were guessing it was probably a three to four footer um kind of going over a log and he slowly went away and just kind of meandered off by himself and didn't cause anybody any problems we went down the path and he kind of went and did his thing no problems no problems never saw him again but it's good to see that out there and you might say, oh, my God, I can't believe you're happy that there's a snake out there that large. Well, I'm hoping that there's a bunch of them, actually, uh, because they eat rodents. They're harmless. They're very, very good for the property. They're very good for the property, um, keeping it rodent free, keeping uh, that kind of thing down. And I'm all right with them. We actually had rat snakes in uh, in Minnesota, I believe. And it was either a bull snake or a rat snake I saw out in our field one time. That was a big old rat snake there too, wasn't it, Corey? I was wrong. It was a different one. My wife knows best for sure. She definitely 
I just defer to her. If she says I'm wrong, I, I kind of just automatically, I might push back a little bit. Uh, a lot of times it's for shits and giggles, but uh, she, uh, she definitely, I defer to her. She has a better, a better, um, a better recollection of things like that than I do. Mike's homestead says she's got a four foot rattler on this, uh, on Saturday at the homestead. Yeah, th those are the ones that I'm I'm not excited to see. I'm not excited to see the rattlers um, or the water moccasins. We bought uh, we bought snake and spider pamphlets here at the tractor supply. They make them uh, basically all the spiders in all the spiders and ticks, and there was something else I believe in there. Uh, anything that's crawling around that's going to bite you, they they put in there. And it showed what they are, um, what damage they can do if they're harmless, and uh, pictures and, and stuff like that. So we got spiders and snakes. Um, I'm good with snakes. I, I am I am good with snakes. I I worry about startling them. I worry like I'm not necessarily afraid of them. I don't want to step on one accidentally. I try to be very cognizant of where I'm stepping out there, especially if I'm crawling around in deadfall, things like that, where they might be kind of hidden underneath. I try to make a little noise as I'm as I'm uh, as I'm approaching places that I can't really observe too well. But my my thing comes when you accidentally run into something, and that's what I worry about. Other than that, I mean, if I if I'm walking along and I see a, a, a snake, I don't really care. I mean, obviously, if it's a if it's a ball or like a huge um, anaconda or something in Tennessee, I'm going to be kind of confused. But uh, if you guys remember back, if you were listening about a year ago, a um, little over a year ago, while we were in Texas, um, I saw that big old coral snake. And turns out when we figured out how big it was, it was like an extremely large coral snake. Like we went back and measured with a tape measure where it was from a video I took of it. And we were guessing it was probably within six inches of the state record length for coral snake, which is big. Um, yeah, I saw that thing. Clyde and I, Clyde, Clyde thought it was a new new toy. Uh, I had to hold him back from it. He was very interested in it, but they don't really bother me much. They don't, uh, they don't bother me much, but I do worry. I do worry about, um, accidental interaction, <laughs> I guess maybe, um, maybe reaching into something and, and finding out that there's some, some lovely lizard or snake making home where I'm trying to put my hand, things like that. That's what worries me. But seeing this, uh, seeing this big, nice uh, rat snake on Saturday, it was kind of, it was kind of a good thing. Like I hadn't seen much rodent activity out there. We, we kind of kept an eye on um, the small, <coughs> the small cabin that Tim had out there. Uh, didn't see any signs of rodent activity. Like I didn't see droppings. I didn't see uh, chewing or anything like that when I would look. Um, but um, yeah, I don't, uh, I didn't see any rodent activity and I would much rather have rat snakes than, than rats for sure. Hunter says, I don't scare easily. I ain't scared. I don't like being startled. The startled, yeah, I get over it really quick. Uh, you get that little hair raise, and I'm just like, nah. It doesn't like send waves of fear through me like some people I know. Um, some people I've been around where they get startled, and then it's like 20 minutes before they calm down. Good morning, John Palmer. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. Chris Dixon says, "Walk heavy with uh, walk heavy with a walking stick might be a good to have carved and ready for you said delinquent scully that's not a bad idea i've been poking around at um i've been poking around there's a couple of companies in the amazon kind of pipeline where I, i've been finding um products to to sample and and do reviews and stuff that have some some hiking sticks and I wouldn't mind doing hiking stick with a spike on the bottom 
or like Chris Dixon says, a heavy carved, uh, heavy carved one that uh, can be used for a weapon. I like the I like the um, retractable uh, aluminum or or graphite ones, and then put a a sharp ass tip on the end. I think would be a solid uh, a solid plan there. So um, there's that. So we we definitely know there's rat snakes out there and and uh, large ones at that. So I'm excited. I'm excited to spend time out there and and really get in tune with the wildlife. Really know kind of where they hang out, where they like to be where I should be um, so we can just kind of coexist out there. Uh, let's check the check the chats here while we uh, while we've got a second in between topics and um, yeah, pretty quiet, pretty quiet on all the other chat fronts, but I uh, I think this horizontal feed I like it. the the normal morning feed got pretty good chat going on. Um, Pip says, Pip with a tip here, put a large ceiling hook on the top of the walking stick to pull down small branches and vines. That's not a bad idea if I wasn't six and a half foot tall. Like Pip Pip using his, his, uh, his full walking stick with his hook, I could probably just reach up and grab it, but. I like it. I like it for sure. Um, Loco says cold steel makes some good pointy spiked walking canes. Yeah. I mean, there is a, there's a hundred different possibilities. And I'm guessing that's going to be something that's in my arsenal and uh, one or two, like I said, Corey and I, since we were going out to the state park and hiking, we're already kind of poking around at looking for uh for hiking sticks and this is just another reason why should, we should probably grab that on the list so i am populating a a, a lots project list on uh, amazon a wish list that uh, that I usually i pass out when people when people ask uh, for christmas ideas family and 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 people that we exchange gifts with ask for Christmas gifts. I usually pop, pop them that lot, uh, that list of things that we don't need imminently, but, uh, we'd like to have and not necessarily want to spend our money on. It's always nice to have that list to just send out because we have to make it easy for everybody. I, I mean, I'm not this, I'm not any different. I, I want to know what you want to get. So I don't, uh, so I don't get you something you don't want, but I think that's kind of that has changed over the years. Um, Corey and I have talked about it a bunch uh, over the years as we've progressed and and just thought about things. When did we stop caring what the other? I mean, when did we stop using our brain to think through what someone else would want? Is it what we don't? Do we don't know enough about people, or do we not want to spend enough time figuring out? something that they would want like i don't i don't know where it transitioned into just give me a list of stuff you want and i'll get you something off it from i remember when i was a kid you made a christmas list there was always times i got stuff that wasn't on my list there was always uh gifts that we it was always that what am i going to get this person what am i going to get this person and and you spent some time sitting down and thinking about it you spend some time thinking about the person. And if you if you got them something fantastic, you were a hero. If you got them something that uh, that meh, it was like the, 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 the thought that counted. Now there's no thought in it. It's just a it's a transaction. And then when it rolled down to being gift cards, let's just let's just pass gift cards back and forth. Um, there was a, a little video that that was going around a couple years ago that Corey sent me and like we had talked about it the day before two days before how we were like we might as well just like sit down at christmas and open our wallets and pass a 20 dollar bill around and uh we were sitting and there was a, a little video of a guy that was sitting at the bar and he's like well merry christmas and he takes out the takes out the 20 and hands it to his buddy and the buddy takes the 20 and hands it back to him he's like merry christmas to you and then they set him on the bar and they drank and it's like 
when we're just passing gift cards around guys i mean really why don't we just hang on to it why do we go through the motions of uh of buying that gift card <laughs> especially when when it was a group of people that that when we would set um we would set a limit we would set a price limit so everybody bought the price limit and everybody wanted gift cards and i'm not saying that we didn't want them but at some points you got to step back and go what what are we doing <laughs> What are we doing? John Palmer says we don't have time to uh, to think about gifts for people. Nah, I mean, there is that. There is that, I guess. Excuses. Excuses. Anyway, guys, we're up here in an hour. I uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. I got a, I got a few things that are going to bleed over into tomorrow. They were actually meant for tomorrow. I put them on the list today, depending on what popped up. Always have some fun stuff and rabbit holes to go down, especially when, when Pickle Pete starts talking calculus and things like that. But uh going to wrap it up today. If you are free for another hour, Pickle Pete, <laughs> Jim says we're feeding the economy. <laughs> um. <laughs> If you got another hour, you got some more time. Uh, my buddy Pickle Pete here, scrambling, Sensei scrambling. He does a he does Good Morning Seattle from the from the West Coast. It is uh, it's going on five o'clock there, I believe. Holy shit, five o'clock there. Seven, six, five. Yeah, five o'clock on the East Coast. Pickle Pete gonna wake you up. Sensei scrambling, music, light, and discussion about topics ranging all over the world. If you uh, if you want to check him out, you should over on YouTube or catch his audio. I think he's got audio feed after the fact. Never really asked him. Never really asked him. It's on YouTube for sure, though. Uh, other than that, I appreciate everyone listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit those likes, shares, and subscribes. Uh, to return value for value, check out watching the show on Noster or catching the replay over there. Joining Noster throwing around some zaps throwing around some sats um pickle Pete says he's talking alternative housing today interesting topic interesting topic uh to show value for value you can also listen on any value for value platform like podverse or fountain.fm you can visit the lotsproject.com or comfreyroots.com to find all the products that i offer blog posts discount codes affiliate links um partner companies and the like you can find that at like i said the lots project.com all sorts of information and links there other than that it's monday guys roll through the monday get through your monday and uh, make it another fantastic start to the week we will circle around and meet up with you again tomorrow mm -hmm.